it has animations. Here's the slides. Thank uh, you, sir. All yours. So this talks about how we build both RPMs today. Uh, last year, I did a talk, and we had a lot to break at the time. And one thing that we did this year is B517, and we will talk about this in the future. Let me change slides here. So who am I? I'm Odilon. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm always speaking Deco and Umberto because we need to speak Portuguese and soon to be Pedro as well. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat, and my work is primarily on RPM packaging. So I package sometimes Foreman, Tello, and Pope RPMs that translate later to downstream satellite. So I'm always packaging something every day for the past two years. Uh, right now, how is the state of RPMs? We have five releases being supported, with 3.16 being in the Oh, this one that will be uh, deprecated soon because it runs on Python 3.8, if I'm not mistaken. And we are reaching the end of life of that release. And we have 3.18, 3.21, 22, and 28 running on Python 3.9. Uh, we have two new releases that we didn't have planned for this year, but they are there now. That is RPM Develop. What is RPM develop? It's the nightly that we call because it's not really nightly yet because we don't have automation yet to make it be so-called nightly, but we want to be as close as possible with Pope our upstream on PyPy because that's the place that we want to be. And we have RPM 3.39. It is the one that will be used on Catello 4.11. And why we're not using 3.14, uh, because I believe you guys deprecated pop files and merged into pop core. And we might be able to just obsolete the old package and make that, but we don't want to take risks now because we are on branching and it's end of the year. People will take PTO. I don't want to be the guy that screws people's PTO because I want the new version. So we can do that next year. But right now, RPM 3.14, 29 will be 39 will be branched next year next week i'm sorry uh, and will be rebuilt on top of python 3.11 that's the greatest thing that we have because we will finally fix that ao http bug that people could not sync on proxy with https on catello because it needs python 3.11 so we are going to fix that finally and what's new? We have PP517 support. We have Copper as a build system now. We are moving from Koji. Uh, we still use Koji for legacy, but right now we use Copper. And night builds are based on Copper. And if you guys remember my talk last year, we have Obo, that is a tool that we created internally. And this tool can now talk to Copper. So we can scratch, run the same way that Fedora folks do with FPKG. We do with Obo being in a wrapper, and you just need to pass your token on Copper and specify the YAML in the YAML section that we have for the configuration, the namespace, or the project that you want to do. Uh, so, how we did RPM packaging until 328 release? Do you guys can see it's too small? How it is? Maybe a little bigger. If you can zoom uh, in just I, a little. Uh, unfortunately, no. This Node.js okay. framework does not allow me to do the zoom. Oh, ah, well, that. in that case, in that case, I'll just I'll squint. I'm old, but it's fine. Yeah, it's Node.js. I hate Node.js. So what we did in the past, when we branched RPMs, we always go from the late the latest release that was packaged. So an older release to the new one. So we always had a problem with dependencies because you guys like to change a lot of dependencies. Like you guys upgrade a lot. So from 3.23.18, we had to mess rebuild on top of Python 3.9 and build on Neo 9 for the first time because it was around CentOS 9 and Rail 9 was released at that time. And 
let's say for 321, we had also to, to add more packages and we had to do backports to 3.18. So it starts to get confusing because you need to support two releases, do backports of CVEs to another releases, and then comes 322. And the madness of backports get bigger because now we have three releases that we need to backport. And sometimes we need to go back to Python 3.8. And if you guys know RPMs, we need to have a separate never for that. So we would add a 0 0.1 for Python 8 packages, not only dot one, because we want to make sure that people could upgrade from one version to another to make sure that the ABI is compatible during the upgrade. And what you did more, more backports, Django, because we had a lot of CVEs on 3.2 that got fixed and we needed to fix. And then comes 3.28. Uh, if you guys remember from 3.22 for 3.28, someone introduced open telemetry. Thanks, Deco. And now we need to port open telemetry to our PM packaging. That's a problem. Open telemetry is a new lib, and they don't know about setup tools. They don't care about setup tools. And what we had to do, we had to take the decision of, are we going to inject metadata for our old build system on the spec file, or are we going to address the big elephant in the room that is, we need to support this. If we are using EO9, we would be able to build PEP 51783 because on the version that is based on Fedora, they already have that. But on EL8, EL8 is old right now, it's six or five years or right, since it was branched. So they don't know about this because the PEP 517 was being implemented at the time. So we had to embrace and package. And what does that mean? That means 45 new packages. We go to the next slide. And a lot of circular dependencies because you need one lib to build another lib and you need to go back, build another one and build another one because RPMs are old and are statically. We need to build one by one. In our case, we could auto build, but we want to have control and know what version we are packaging, what dependency we're bringing doing the first filter so users know that we are taking care of the dependency and are not introducing libs that we don't know why is there. So if you take a look here, um, we have some injections that we have to do on package that they do not know about setup.py. We have to create the minimal setup.py. Sometimes we have even to force to use uh, SCM for old builds to make sure that we have the AGG metadata there. So what we built for PP5107? Uh, we built Hatch as build system. We have Fleet, we have Poetry, and we could bring more dependencies, more build system in the future because the base is already there in the build route. Let me show to you guys how we change the spec file. Oh, how we build support for this Python only, if you guys are aware, is a tone out parser that is minimal, but it's the base of packaging on PP5107 because it can read and parse by project that tone out. And the problem is it does not have setup.py. So what we had to do, do one last ride and inject a setup.py on this package. It's the same thing that Fedora does. It's the same thing that CentOS does. So why not? If they are doing, we just copy and make sure that it's the same. And what we use it at the time, we use pipe deep tree and pipe grip. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of, the libs is you have the installation of a project on Python and you run pipe deep tree and you create a, a list of dependencies of everything that is installed on your VAMF or your virtual env or in your system. And pipe grip will show in a grip way everything that you had installed. 
and it was amazing to solve dependencies because as I said, we had a lot of circular dependencies. To build fleet, I had to build hatch. To build hatch, I had to build poetry. And I had poetry core, fleet core, hatchling, and that Ouroboros that we have in Python sometimes that gets complicated. And we had four or five new packages. And we have a new RPM macro for spec file. This is the beauty that does all the job that we need. If you take a look here, we have a packaging structure of setup.py. Everyone knows this one. We have a, a macro that builds the package, once that installs. And here we have the metadata that we are installing with the package. When we change to PP5107, it's different a little. We still have the will. We use will to build. We install and the metadata is different here. It's a disk info. It's not only EGG info. That's what we use now. And we, we have a mix of packages right now. Ones that use setup.py and on PEP 517, we can still use setup tools, but the setup tools will not be setup.py, it will be a pipe project that come out. And now we go to the RPM developer. Okay, nightly. Any questions about PP five hundred seven? Please don't need to wait to the end to ask why we did, how we did. Okay, uh, here's we have the RPM develop uh, that is nightly for us at packaging. We are copying the same structure that we have on Catello where the development and new packages go to our team develop and later we cherry pick into another stable releases and that's what we are going to do why because help us during catello branch sometimes ian asks me for packaging of a new release of pope and sometimes it takes one month sometimes it takes two weeks for 328 it took two months because of open telemetry so if you're trying to stay close to Pope, this will reduce in time and in complexity. Uh, another thing is not update from an older release. We're trying to stay ahead of the release that Catello is using right now. So when they ask to branching and all the libs are there already. Uh, this will help us identifying regression and blockers because we can have the latest and greatest version of Pope running on Catello development, and we can run tests against, and people will see regressions, slowness, and any other stuff that we have. Automation. We need automation and automation and automation because it's too many packages. Let's be honest. You guys, it's too many dependencies. Like, not even for more Catello have the main packages that you guys have. If combined, I believe. So Python have too many dependencies. <laughs> it's not Node, but it's almost there. So we need automation to identify package bumps, to identify obsoletes, to identify uh, everything that we need to update spec files, add new spec files, uh, deprecate packages. And now we build packages with Copper. Uh, Right until now, we had everything on Catello.org, on the Koji that we have. And if you have ever worked with Koji, you know that maintaining a Koji is something that is not fun. And it takes a lot of time because you need to sync repos, you need to publish, uh, you need to flat uh, the repository because our code is old enough that it does not know about modules. So we need to flat modules to inject during the build system. And what could Copper provide to us? We have RHEL 8 and RHEL 9 build routes. So we now build on RHEL 8 and RHEL 9 bindings, truly bindings of RHEL. Uh, we can still scratch and test packages. If you know about RPM packaging, scratch is how we test the package, see simulates if it can be built. Uh, we still use OBO. Go ahead, Kirin. Uh, can you quickly say what Copper is? Is it like a software you have installed, or is it a service, or what is it? Oh, 
copper is this here copper is you know AUR from Arch Linux where people build packages so it's like AUR but for Fedora or PPA from Ubuntu to Fedora it's a place where you can build your packages you can have their projects a lot of projects that are not packaged into fedora directly are here on copper or let's say the kde environment the kde sig use copper to build the nightly and the next version that they have to not be on testing of fedora to only the stable version gets to testing on fedora so it's a build product that fedora has a project that you can build packages there and it will soon to deprecate modules because modules will go away on Fedora. But you can run, let me get here on the one that we have. This one is Pope Core. So we have here rel 8, we have rel 9. We could go to a flag and enable CentOS. We could enable uh, Fedora as well if you want to and try to run the packages that we have against those releases. So instead of building Koji, we are building copper right now. And why copper? Because copper have a nice dashboard and nice integrations. And here you can see logs and you can see the packages, you can see the builds, you can monitor stuff. You can automate with web hooks if you want to and the nicest thing is that now obo that is our tool that we use to scratch that to build packages can talk to copper and run everything that we do on koji there and how is the definition done let me go here um obo is just a wrapper for ansible so we use yaml file this is like an inventory that we have so here we define what we need here we say we want Python 3.9, we want Ruby 2.7, we want RHEL 8 and RHEL 9. And here I removed some, some info here because it was too long, but the name of the project is RHEL, RHEL 8, and the architecture that we have, the modules that we want, that is this ones here. So this will go to the build route. And what we want as well, in addition to the build route, we want GCC, and we want Python 3.9 RPMs. And we can also have external repos. Why external repos? Because sometimes you need to have the dependency like already done. So we go to the repository that we have now that is published, that is staging M, I believe, on the Fedora, on the Fedora project. And there we have the build route. So you can import as RPMs and RPMs that are there to make sure that the build route is complete for both. That's how we do on copy right now. And uh, being totally honest, I did some rebuilds already for Pulp. And on Koji, it would take two or three days to build all the packages. On Copper, it's 12 hours, I believe, running not on parallel but running one by one. If I was to run on parallel, it would be two or three hours or until the copper folks ban me for doing the OS on the build system. So if you want to know how we built the copper, let's talk later. We can talk offline. You can reach me on the element or on the forum and forum, and we can do a presentation later on how we can enable you to use your spec file or package using copper and elbow. Uh -huh. And here is a representation that what we have now with Pokecore Nightly. Uh, we have a repository that is Nightly. We also have uh, 328. And this is what I want to show you guys. Let me click on this link here. Every time you run a scrap build, it creates this big hash just to build the package that we want, we want to scratch. This. On this one was Pope Core 339.2. 
as I told you, we are working on that. It was yesterday. And the beauty of this is we are getting the build root of the older packages here. We are built only one package, but we have the whole tree of, of packages that we have already built on copper that we import here. So we can run repo closure. We can check dependencies. We can require a package that's not here because we are using ex external repo. And this is the pipeline that we run to publish. And here we run tests. We are still using the Ansible installer, but soon to change that because I had too much design. But we are going to use the only the former installer because we need to make sure that the only the one that we use on Catello is the one using to install the RPMs here. Because we need to make sure that the RPMs are installed correctly, because we use a different Postgres right now on Foreman and Catello. So we need to have all the 20 keys that we have on Catello and Foreman there. And that leads to the next slide. That is questions. It was too confusing. What do you guys think that we're doing on RPMs? Anything that could benefit you guys upstream on Pulp? So did I understand correctly that you are building uh, nightly uh, packages from Pulp or no? Uh, not from Pope upstream. Let's say when you build an, uh, the last tag of pipeline, it's not automatically yet. Like I need to go there and auto bump the package, but it's going to it's pushed nightly. Every every update that we have on the development branch goes nightly into the stable repo that we have, and people can test against. Yeah, in cool. the future so we are. We plan to have nightly, like, or have a version of Pope that is being packaged automatically, like let's say the Pendabot. Yeah, yeah, because we're right. releasing so frequently now that, like, yeah, <laughs> it would be nice if it just happened automatically. Yeah, yeah, like the idea that I have, and I need to discuss this with the forum folks because sometimes my ideas go cra too crazy. But we have a definition on Pope core packaging here. That we always try to keep updated. That is just a requirements.txt. So my plan in the future is maybe add the panda bot and ask him to scan this file. And if you guys release a new I release, it that would be awesome. Then our PRs. And if the PR is there, we run something. That's why I asked it for a lock file with dependencies in the past for you guys, because I can go there and consume the lock file and run automation on top of that, see what changes from one version to another, and open the packages. So a lock file is amazing for that. It's how they do on Forum. <laughs> uh, the tooling is there, we just need automation. Deco, you yeah. want to go ahead? OK, OK. And a little thanks for sharing all those stuff. No, this was really, really great. And well, let me ask you, do you are aware, you know, like, do you know how much time it takes to build those RPM packages? From, from zero to hero or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like, imagine, uh, like, I just released, like, a new popcorn version. You know, like from that instant, from the release, you know, like how much time it will take to build. Let's say you did not change any any requirements. Let's say you didn't, and it's yeah. manual, and you're not finding, hey, we have a new release. Let's say two hours, maybe, because I need to go package, open the PR, someone needs to review. We don't auto merge here. We could in the future, but not now. So if there's no dependency change, it's only a package bump, and one hour, I did that with Tenio in the past. Like he released it, and in one hour the package was upstream. Because we need to run the pipeline. The pipeline installs pull tests, so the one hour is the pipeline. Okay, cool. Thank you. 
Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first of all, this is awesome. I started, you know, working on packaging uh, in like 2019, but then didn't complete it. Uh, and I was using, co uh, and uh, I, I was just thinking that with the container images, uh, the container images that pop upstream publishes right now, we install from pip, and in order to build our a bunch of our packages, we have to install all of these development RPMs, like Python three devel, uh, you know, lib module md devel, etc. So theoretically, we could build our stable images from your RPMs, and yes. that would save space. Yeah. Yes, you probably could. Uh, the main reason here is you guys move too fast. So our RPMs would be out of date, not out of date, but we could not keep on the same pace with that right. automation because you guys release a lot of white versions as backport. Yeah. So we need to have, uh, let's say we have a stable version that Catello and Forma is using right now that's 328. You guys yeah. could build an image from that because it's, it's the one being used right now. Yeah, gotcha. Understood. Thanks. Thank you, then. Matthias? Um, maybe not a question to you personally, but in the, to everyone, do you think that uh, switching on the packaging for Fedora would help? Especially for I'm not, nurturing the community here? Um, I'm not sure because uh, Fedora moves the Python release earlier than RHEL, and I'm not sure. Uh, on Foreman, they try to use RHEL and RHEL likes and use CentOS. So let's say we don't have Python 3.20 on CentOS, but we have that on Fedora. So we would need to rebuild and every time. So I'm not sure how to do that. How we could break, we would break the ABI. And that's not a problem. We do that every day. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to keep and pair with Fedora packaging unless it's going to be used only of Fedora. Because Fedora has its own packages. Here we build everything from there. And yeah, um, and I think you're actually building four Fedora installations. Oh, we, we could. Uh, the question is, is that is the additional effort worth the benefit? I'm not that, sure. yeah, that is a good question. Yeah, yeah. Cause there would be an additional effort, right? I mean, these would be separate packages. Hey folks, I need, I really hate to do this again, but we're, this is another one where we are out of time. It is the top of the hour. Kieran, you had your hand up. Do you want to ask now or do you want to hit up Odalon offline? So, so I have a question to the pulp pe people actually. Uh, so are there any plans for upstream pulp to move off setup pi and to the what's it called dot pummel way of doing python packages good question next question when you find um, someone who knows <laughs> I, I have such a plan and i believe yeah. our only blocker was the catello packaging before this change so we are not there blocking you anymore Please All just right. don't use anything Thank you. obscure. Please <laughs> use poetry, hatling, fleet. Don't, don't use a new build system because that, that's confusing. Yeah. Okay. So that definitely is something that we want to we want to open. I think Odalon is have that discussion about making that happen, making that work. All right. Um, Odalon, this has been great. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording so we can get set up for the next talk. And uh, if you have some time on Friday, we have an open session on pulp pain points, and you can come and nag at us. How's that sound? Yeah. Um, it'll be there. Outstanding. Thank you. Stopping the recording. The pain point section.